Okay, so I thought we would try to finish this book, um, The Case of the Fire Alarm. And we're in the middle of it. So we will start um, where the less people are. And the chapter before that was called Late Night Secrets. And you remember that's where um, Buddy goes over to talk to Michael. No, Buddy goes over to talk to Mouse about who he thinks um, pulled the fire alarm. And Mouse gets mad at him because Buddy thinks that it's Michael. And um, then right at the end, uh, Buddy was leaving, but then Cat With No Name uh, goes on the on the wood pile and he's talking to them about, um, uh, he said, maybe it wasn't a human. Um, what makes you dogs so sure a human pulled the alarm? And then they were thinking, well, I didn't do it. Did you do it? And then he said, uh, duh, the ghost of four legs. Remember? And then Buddy and Mouse both think that there's no such thing as ghosts, and we don't think so either. So, uh, but they can't be sure because Cat With No Name is weird. Okay, so this chapter is called, It's Hard to Talk to Humans. I need to talk to Jillian. I need to find a way to ask her what she was doing in the art room, and I need to make her understand what I'm asking so that she can answer me. I don't think a ghost pulled the fire alarm, even if there are such things as ghosts. How would a ghost do it? And I still don't think Jillian did it either. If I can prove she didn't, maybe Mouse will agree that it's possible Michael did it. Then maybe he'll help me prove it. But how am I going to talk to Jillian? I could probably find her if I went looking for her, but I'm not supposed to wander around by myself. I'm supposed to stay here in Mom's office and be a good dog. Well, I don't think Mom would mind if I sat up and looked out the window. To I see kids playing outside right now, but they're all smaller than younger than Jillian. Hey, maybe Jillian will come outside in a little bit. And when she does, maybe mom will let me go outside to talk to her. I sit and I watch as one group of kids come inside and another older group goes outside. <gasps> There's Jillian over by the swings. I paw at mom's lap to get her attention. Can I go outside? I beg, please can I go outside? Mom looks up from her computer. Do you need to go outside, buddy? Yes, I say, wagging my tail. Mom snaps my leash to my collar, then takes me outside. I see Jillian playing by the swings. This way, I say, pulling Mom toward Jillian. Hey, look, it's Buddy. Can Buddy play with us? Can Buddy be off the leash? A group of kids call. He can if someone will bring him in after recess, Mom says. I will, Mom, Connor says. Okay, Mom says, unhooking my leash. I zoom past all those other kids. Hey, Jillian, I say, skidding to a stop in front of her. Hi, buddy, she says. She reaches out to scratch my ears, and I move closer so that she can reach. She's really good at scratching ears. So, Jillian, I say, remember when the fire alarm went off? You were outside talking to one of your friends, and you said, no one saw me. What did you mean by that? What did you do that no one saw? Jillian doesn't understand. What? You want to play Chase? Jillian asks. Chase? I love Chase. It's my favorite. No, I don't want to play Chase. I want you to tell me what you were doing that no one saw. I know you were lying when you told mom you weren't in the art room. Why did you lie about that? Come on, buddy. Jillian claps her hands. Let's go. She runs away from me. No, I say, hurrying after her. I don't want to play Chase. I want to talk. Jillian giggles as she glances back at me, then runs even faster. But I'm faster than she is. I run in front of her to get her to stop, but she keeps changing directions. I can't tell if she's going th doing this on purpose or if she really doesn't understand what I'm saying to her. I know it's hard for humans to understand us, but most of the time, if they just try, ugh. A bell rings then, and all the kids run toward the school. See you later, buddy, Jillian says with a wave. I just stand there with my tail hanging heavy. I'm no closer to finding out what Jillian was doing when the fire alarm went off than I was before. It's frustrating, isn't it? Says a voice behind me. I turn. It's Jazzy. Remember, that's the little dog that lives by the school. Communicating with humans, I mean, Jazzy says. It's frustrating. Sure is, I say. 
making my way toward the France. I was trying to tell my humans about some strange things I saw last night, but they thought I just wanted to go outside, Jazzy says. Strange things? What strange things? I ask. I saw lights turning on and off in the school, Jazzy says. Then I saw a girl's face in one of the windows. Except I don't think it was a real girl. I think it was a ghost girl. I stare at Jazzy. A ghost girl? Yes. Was her face burned? I ask. I don't know, Jazzy says. She was too far away. I couldn't see her very well. I wasn't sure I believed Cat with no name when he said he'd seen a ghost at this school, but I have to believe Jazzy when she says it because dogs don't lie. Is it possible the cat with no name was telling the truth? Could there be a ghost in the school? Could that ghost have pulled the fire alarm? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, that's the end of chapter seven. Chapter eight coming soon.